he'll be right back. Uh, anyway, go ahead and call the meeting to order. That way we can get out in a good time and hopefully it doesn't start pouring rain on our way out. Uh, but uh, it's one more. Well, worse, okay, <laughs> worse than what it is today. Um, just want to let you all know that uh, we still need volunteers to staff our Task Force tent at Monday's MLK on Main Street celebration. This event commemorates Dr. King's historic visit to Fort Worth on October the 22nd, 1959, and includes the unveiling of a Heritage Trail marker. The event will be held from noon to 7 p.m. at General Ward Square. Rabbi Bloom has agreed to present remarks on the task force uh, behalf during the, uh, the noon hour. I'd also like to thank Lily Big Hands and Charles Boswell for volunteering. We need at least three more volunteers to staff the tent for one hour each at 4, 5, and 6 p.m. Let us know if you can attend, please. <laughs> we need we need you there, okay? Uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and open it up to opening remarks. And, uh, Lily, you want to start off? I'll start. As I was reviewing the uh, minutes, I, um, I realized that there were some, some things in the minutes that people wanted to add to their recommendations, so I would just ask you to please pay, pay close attention to those and make sure they got picked up. I think they probably all did, but... You know, the one thing that we don't want is to get to the end of this and somebody say, well, you didn't capture what I said. And that's what happens when you don't pay close attention. So um, the other thing is, um, I was gonna say, if I sneak out of here in a little bit, it's because I don't drive in the dark, but I wanna just thank Bob Ray Sanders for bringing me mm -hmm. this afternoon. Um, you know, we just, um, he just scooped me up and brought me on out here. So mm -hmm. I wanna thank everybody for getting me here. And what a beautiful asset this is for the city of Fort Worth. So um, it's really nice, and if the weather were better, we could appreciate it a little bit more, but I want to thank everybody for braving the weather to get here, uh, to, make, to make this quorum so we can get the business done. Thank you. Rabbi? Yeah, it's, it's funny that um, on Saturday in synagogues all throughout the world, we read about, uh, it was pouring down rain there, we read about the story of Noah and <laughs> the ark. <laughs> so I almost felt like I needed an ark to get here today. <laughs> But uh, now one of the, the an arc stands for acts of random kindness. I hope that throughout what we're doing, we can become uh, permanently kind in that we find uh, equity for each and every person here. Because kindness starts at home, but kindness has to come from here, not only from words within the paper. So I hope that we not only write and give recommendations, but we also live the recommendations as well. So thank you all for being here. Barbara? <laughs> I hate to follow him. He's always got one of these stories. These preacher stories. So, um, no, I just want to also say thank you. Hey, wait, wait, is Ty's coming in? Is there a baby here? There is a baby. Yeah. <laughs> by the time we get this to the city council, we'll have people on board who are ready to support these recommendations, ready to fight for them if they think they're worthy. And, you know, after we turn it over, we've done our job. I mean, you can all stay involved, of course. And if they decide they want to keep a task force going, you're welcome to be on it. <laughs> Without me. <laughs> No, uh, Tell it, us how you feel. <laughs> no, it's, no it, it's, it's been good, and I'm, I'm proud of the work we've done. Uh, just ready to see it through. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. All right. <laughs> and did you did that good. You did good. You did that good. The next thing on our agenda is the approval of minutes from our September 24th meeting. Has everyone had a chance to review those? <clears throat> Thank you. 
Move approval. Move approval. Charles. Shall I hear a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Uh, four. Oh, there she is. Okay. Uh, summary of public comments and draft recommendations, Michelle. Um, I gave everybody a handout that has the, uh, the comments that we've gotten, both from the public meeting and from um, emails. So um, I apologize for not getting that sooner, but um, people were still sending them to me this morning. So um, I've also included, along with the public comments, um, a statement that we got from United Fort Worth and a memo that we got from the City of Fort Worth Diversity and Inclusion Committee with their comments on the recommendations. I, I do have a few more people who've said they're going to send comments who have not. And I know there are some committees that took notes that um, if you want to share those with me, I can put those all in one document. And as I get additional comments, I can send them to people just so that you know um, what other people are saying. But this is what I have to date. Okay. Uh, you know that you all may not have had enough time to digest all these comments. So um, I talked to Fernando a little bit earlier, and sorry to get to talk to the co-chairs about this, but uh, a thought was that we review these based on the recommendations of each of our committees. So that way we can see if there's any amendments or revisions that need to happen with our recommendations. Uh, and then, uh, but we want to put a deadline on there because we want to keep to our schedule so that we could say that if you, uh, to give us the time to do that so that our committees can meet at least one more time to review any comments. Some of the comments may change, some of the, uh, our recommendations, some may not, we don't know. Uh, but the deadline would be October the 31st to get any revisions and so forth back because we do need to get to where we can put a final together. So that's one process that we wanted to discuss, but we do want to review, you know, any of the comments, if anybody has any questions or so forth, Charles. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I was able to read this afternoon. So the, the document we got from United Fort Worth, mm -hmm. what my question is about, the second page of their document, they say, favoritism was exercised. What they're saying is they were not afforded an opportunity to address us. And they cite some examples of other people, like the bar owners on West 7th Street. We all know why those things were done. But is that an accurate statement on their part that they requested to address us and were denied that opportunity? I mean, obviously, we have these comments now, but. Mm -hmm. They did um, send in a request. And as co-chairs, we viewed that at that time it wasn't, you know, something that we were, because we were already had all these other individuals and departments to come and visit with us. Well, and those were basically where... city departments and the county, you know, that came and visited with us. The three E came to us. Basically, because the three had already written their three E plan way prior to what happened with the uh, sorry, my mind went blank. The lady, Craig, this Craig, before that Craig incident. Uh, and I guess, in addition, we had plenty of other avenues for input, right? Yes, uh, exactly. We had town halls. And we had town halls. Community conversations for anything. Written comments, mm -hmm. which we now have. Yeah. So. And, and Charles, my recollection, recollection was that they and some others wanted to make sure there would be citizens' voices heard at our meetings, and we decided that people could listen and they could express themselves at any of these public meetings that we have. But at this meeting, we would not have a citizen's presentation like they do at City Council. <coughs> Uh, because we just didn't have enough time, number one, to do that. But they had access to the uh, online 
comments, they had access to any of the community conversations. And as far as I know, nobody was shut down. And they showed up with signs to protest, which they were allowed to do without any interference that I know of, right? Right. Let's also, unfortunately, they uh, asked for a meeting with us after they publicly slandered us at a open mic at the council meetings. So um, you're not going to slander someone. I know. I can tell you personally. I had to go look up in the dictionary what they called me. Uh, but the, you know, they went out and slandered us publicly, and then asked for a meeting. So sometimes, you know, uh, it would have been um, easier had they say we want a dialogue instead of we want to. Well, they're not the only group that we didn't meet with that asked. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much time you can have to meet with. So. But Thank also, you. some of the concerns that they raised, we've addressed in here. Yeah. Yeah. And some of it's not even under our purview. Right. All right. So. I appreciate the answer. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing I will uh, mention, uh, not related to this, but at one of the... Uh, open houses that I attended, which was full with the Hayes Army Peace, uh, there were at least like four members of the Human Relations Commission who were there because they had met the same night. But two of them specifically asked, and I'll ask you because I haven't reviewed everything, they didn't think that we were addressing the LGBT community, specifically in terms of criminal justice, and overall in our recommendations, and I told them that there was representation, obviously, in those discussions that come up. And as far as I was concerned, those issues were addressed. But I don't know how specific any of those issues were. So, and they said they were, and, and they may be in, listen to they said they were going to send in. I did have a few comments that, that were addressing LGBT. And then also, um, there were quite a few comments about the um, people with mobility. Um, right. Oh yeah, there was one yeah. guy who was Because we sent you comments with the ADA that yeah. we met with, yeah. yeah. So the, those are in the comments that you have. Okay. So there again, one of the things that we could do is look at all these comments that have been made so that the committees could go back and revisit to ensure that, you know, we have uh, touched on those, you know, any of these comments, or if we need to revise any of our recommendations. Or if y'all want to read them all now, and then we'll talk about them after. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, Which, we'll, you we'll know. Later. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michelle, do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, no, I am. Um, the, the top page shows you the participation and the, the comments that we got, so um, obviously we would have liked more people to show up, but... You know. Michelle, I want to publicly acknowledge the great job that you did <coughs> with setting these meetings up and the organization, the structure, and it's just, just so well done. And I think that, um, well, I know from the conversations that I've had with several people, People really appreciated the amount of work that you and your team put into preparing for this and how succinct everything was laid out so it was easy to understand. And I especially got comments about how the committees were laid out so you had an opportunity to seek information on whatever committee it was that, whatever issue it was that you uh, wanted additional information on. Just very well done. So. Uh, and I thank all of you who came out to help to staff some of that. Uh, it, was a, it was a great event. All of them were very well done. So as you suggest, uh, as you outlined here for us, uh, a lot of people didn't come, and I would hope that it's because we've been so public with the information and the posting of everything that we've done. So I'm hoping that people got their needs met, and then this document you sent out today, I've read all of that. And so additional comments are here. So thank you for a great job. I, I will say that one thing we did, in addition to the, the emails that we spent and the organizations that we, that we reached out to um, to get participation in the meetings, 
We also on social media did paid advertising, mm -hmm. which we don't typically do. For the city, I never do it. So, <laughs> um, but to try and get more um, more interest, and actually the one post where we shared the video um, when we did that paid post, it was actually shared um, and clicked through for 249 times, which um, was a very good response. And so that's why I was I was hoping that would equal more people coming to the meetings. But like Lily said, you know, maybe they. Maybe they got their questions answered by looking at this stuff online, um, or um, maybe they did email their comments in. But, yeah. yeah, I'd like to say, I mean, um, the last one I attended was at Diamond Hill, and we had very few citizens who showed up. But I wasn't expecting a lot of people to show up at these meetings, because most of the people who had something to say had said it at the town halls or the community conversations or whatever. So I, I wasn't disappointed that in some of these we didn't have a lot of people showing up because I felt like, and, and this indicates that, people were engaged and we made every effort to get them engaged. So, and, and, and they'll have time to come into the city council if they don't like what we did yeah. or if they do. So. I was very pleased. Michelle, you did a great job. Mm -hmm. Any questions of Michelle? So, Fernando, uh, number five talks about the revision and recommendation and authorization to prepare a final report. If uh, we're going to. I understand that uh, the task force may wish to entertain a motion calling on each of the committees to meet at least once more uh, between now and October 31st to review the respective committee recommendations uh, in response to uh, various <coughs> comments that, that we've received through the public meetings and uh, through the website. It may be good uh, to take a motion of that effect and to refer to the appropriate draft of the recommendations that would be the basis for that review. And, and, uh, uh, toward that end, I would suggest that the task force consider uh, endorsing the, uh, the latest draft, the October 10th draft. Okay. Uh, you will recall that you uh, endorsed a previous draft at your meeting on September 24th. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, the, the co-chairs have met and have uh, uh, spoken with the, the chair of, of, of criminal justice. Yes. Uh, the only significant change between the September 24th draft, uh, which you uh, previously discussed, and the October 10th draft, is a change in criminal justice recommendation number one, uh, which is entitled Civilian Oversight of Police Department. Uh, and uh, essentially the change uh, deals with uh, the recommendation calling for consideration of uh, multiple models of civilian oversight, including a civilian review board, but also including uh, what is commonly called the uh, investigative model, uh, and what's commonly called the uh, auditor uh, monitor model. Uh, the, the idea is to uh, rely upon the city manager uh, in cooperation with uh, various interest groups uh, to determine uh, what model or combination of models uh, is most appropriate for Fort Worth and not attempting to prescribe the details uh, to the city manager uh, in the task force uh, recommendation. So uh, that's the, the major uh, difference. We've also uh, reinserted at the request of the uh, co-chairs uh, arrest data as one of the criteria uh, for measuring progress uh, in respect to civilian oversight. So those are the significant changes between the uh, September 24th version and the October 10th version. And so if we're asking the uh, committees to uh, review these recommendations again uh, uh, in respect to the, the comments, it may be uh, advisable to, to refer to the appropriate uh, version in your motion. We, we can discuss. I'll just call on you. I think I would be remiss if I don't 
make this, make this comment. I know it was sent out to me last week. I didn't have the opportunity to provide you with my comments and feedback for Wednesday due to unforeseen circumstances. Uh, and not to make that an excuse or anything, but I personally, and I don't want to speak for Corey or the rest of the criminal justice uh, committee, but it's hard for me to really, I've really tried my, my best to get behind the new proposed civilian oversight. And the troubling part for me is that it didn't come from us. It came from the city manager's office. It came from the assistant city manager's office. It is not what our committee had proposed. It is something that, essentially, it's a NACO report that's put into our recommendation. Um, it, it's not the work that we spent uh, almost a year and a half doing. If I knew at the end, of come November when it was time to submit our recommendation, I was going to be getting uh, a recommendation that the city manager's office said that they can run with. I probably would not have wasted so much time and effort going forth with this uh, effort. Uh, we all agree that there needs to be some form of civilian oversight, uh, whether that is a citizen review board, whether that's an investigative model, you know, to be determined. Uh, but I feel more comfortable. Uh, again, not speaking for the full criminal justice committee, and Corey is more than willing, uh, more than able to speak for herself. But you know, I feel more comfortable going forth with the recommendation that we've submitted. And if the city manager decides, or the city council decides that, okay, let's take this approach, then so be it. But I think going ahead and pretty much submitting a watered down recommendation just makes us look. And it gives a bad impression that the city put their thumb on the scale, and we don't want we don't want that. This is what we recommend. If the city decides this is what we're going to go with, so be it. But what actually came out of here is what we actually gave. Is what needs to be in the report. I personally, once again, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with me or any of us here. It has to do with all of us. I actually think that the new recommendation, how it's been formed, I actually think it's stronger than the older one. Why? Because I think it has much more, in my view, once again, because it has much more of a chance of mixing and matching in order to get what needs to be done. I feel uh, that the old recommendation, it's either a yes or no, either you accept it or you don't accept it. There's no, no, it's, it's black and white. I always try and embrace a little of the gray so there's, there's a way to make something work. I don't see how the original one is going to allow it to work. It's either going to be accepted or rejected. Here, with this, it could be a civilian review board. It might come out like that. Or it might come out another another possible. If if one is if the first one is rejected, right, what impotence is there for the city council or anyone else to come up with another one? Well, you, you know, the, the burden is on the city council to come up with something. But what we said is, if I said A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's what I said. I didn't say one, two, three, four, five. I said A, B, C, D, F, G, and that's what we recommend. We didn't come back and say, okay, well, they said A, B, C, D, F, G, but how about one, two, three, four, five? No, that's never what we said. These, re these are recommendations. The city does not have to take them. It's on them. We're not saying do it or don't do it. This is saying this is a recommendation. Now, if you take that, and you enhance it, or you use it as a springboard to come up with something. So it's not a take it or leave it. Llegatelo or dejalo. No, take it or leave it. No, it's not that. It's here it is. What do you think? This is what we came up with. And, and we're done. That's the recommendation. There isn't an old recommendation. It's the only recommendation from the Criminal Justice Committee. That's the, there's not an old one. There's not a new one. There's only one. That's the one that we spend time on. And if it, like you said, Rabbi, if it turns out it ends up being that, let it end up being that. But don't come and say, 
we saw it, but that's not what we're going to do. We think this is the recommendation. If that's the recommendation, then they should, one of them should have been on the committee. That's my point. We said one, two, three, four, five, not A, B, C, D, F, G. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I think we should submit what they came up with. Okay. Bob, uh, I, I definitely agree. I was under the impression, for some reason, that Ty was in on the discussion. I, 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 I was in on the discussion, and, 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 and we, submitted, we submitted one. But then the most recent one that came out last week, I did a black line of it. I think I had maybe 20 words that was left in the one that we had worked on. Okay. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm all for cohesive and us all working together, but I think there's a difference when, us, when we're working together and we're pushing out a product versus being told what our product is. No, I, 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 I totally agree with you. And I, I, I uh, also was saying that when I heard that when your recommendations came up, that the city manager's office was already thinking about something regarding some kind of civilian review, I was encouraged by that. Uh, and thought, hey, maybe maybe we're all on the same wavelength. But I, but I didn't know, without a doubt, because we appointed you chair and you a member of this committee. I'm definitely willing to go with whatever you suggest. And as I've said many times in this group, when we've been told that certain things will be dead on arrival, that it was not our decision to abort it. Before it got there, if they were going to kill it, let them kill it. Exactly. And so, uh, and, and just and, and, no, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting you. And and I, and I just want to make sure we're all in the, agreement that we want something to happen. Right, and I just want to make sure that you know that the record is clear and the minutes reflected accurately. I'm not saying the city manager's office approach is wrong or that you know Correct. looking at all three versions of which one is the best one. Implemented, that's the wrong way of doing it. No, that's 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 not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I think the recommendation that we submit that comes out of our our, our task force should be a product that we actually submit. Now, you know, we can use you know the information that was provided us to enhance the original one with the data points, but I think the ultimate recommendation, just my 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 personal. And I know it's up to the co-chairs and the rest of the body to all of us. That's just my thought opinion. Now, what about that recommendation that you worked on with uh, uh, how about just Valerie? Valerie, <laughs> sorry, I was going to call us because I say Angie. Uh, that recommendation that you worked on with Valerie. What was the difference in it? Yeah. I, the action items are one thing to actually take place. Mm -hmm. It is one thing, and actually. Designating saying that she won an 11 member group. Mm -hmm. And I think and I, the one that we discussed with Valerie and Valerie, you're here, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. It was still having the action items with that citizen review board, but also uh, evaluating other options that may you know, be better suited, but also having an independent complaint uh, intake uh, form implemented as well. Uh, the new recommendation, and it's, it's more so kind of like we're just going to, we're going to do a lot of research and due diligence before we move forward with something. Would and my feel fear is, is that is that you know we'll we'll, we'll move forward with the uh, auditor monitor role, but then a review board would be the police chief's advisory board. And I think that would be a disservice to uh, I think that would be a disservice to the city and the PD. And well you know and it's not just that I'm saying, you know, it's you have to start somewhere and that's a suggestion that's a start great. But I think it would be doing us, everyone in this service is like, okay, this is what we came up with. But. Okay. I think what this speaks to is the integrity of the process. I mean, as the chair of one of the subcommittees, I, I find this discussion a little alarming. We, we set forth a process that we all agreed on to follow, and I think what Ty is speaking to is the integrity of that process, that our the work product we put forward is a product of that process. And I just think it's it's important for all the rest of us who are dealing with less fraught subjects than criminal justice perhaps, but equally important ones. And whatever it, we send up, what we say it sends up, whatever it transforms or transmogrifies into after the fact, that's what we were hoping. Good discussion. Thank you. Uh, 
so again, we can still go back and modify and if you want to. I can send a new thing if necessary that reflects the, rec the suggestions from the city manager's office it, as well as our previous one. And I, I'm off work for the next two weeks. I can finally get that scene. <laughs> <laughs> You're working. You think you can. You're going to have baby yeah. duty. Let me ask this. Is there a meeting <coughs> even though we've we said this, is there any way to include something that says, however, the city manager's office has come up with these ideas to go again? Or I'm just saying, as. That's going to be a, based on. Your committee. You know, we said and this. I can tell you what I'm thinking. I, I, please I mean, that could be, you know, no. Talking, talking, talking. What I was personally thinking is when we submit, you know, our original recommendation and hence, you know, maybe finding somewhere that, you know, it city manager's office has suggested, you know, approaching them this particular recommendation in X, Y, Z way, you know, or just so it's out there that, okay, this is, uh, um, a setup or a recommendation or a model of what is already being developed and thought by the city manager's office and incorporated into our recommendation. If, that, you know, if that's a way to. That's what I was going to say. That you would just need to incorporate that. In so, there. so to Katie's to Katie's point, though, I want to make sure that we all understand that there are no flaws with the integrity of the process. Mm -hmm. We've left it to the committees to put together mm -hmm. what they have recommended. Yes, we have the responsibility to look at those and make sure that they meet the criteria for being measurable and being actionable. So we've done that. Ty, though, you, we know what the hot spots are. This is one of the hottest spots of our work because mm -hmm. this is the one that drove the whole process that we and the whole appointment of the task force. So what, what I think we got lost in a little bit, if we are lost, and, and I don't totally agree with that, is when we tried to take what everybody felt about it and wordsmith it a little bit, and then to give credit for what's already been done, what's already in process. And, and I think we kind of maybe got lost in that, but certainly the integrity of the process from all six of the committees, now what, seven, seven. maybe? Seven. seven. has not, it's no flaws. We've recommended all the notes are posted, You've come here, and I, I started my presentation earlier today, my comments, with make sure you look at the minutes, because you, some of you had some concerns at this time with what was captured in the minutes. Well, if you've ever taken minutes, you know that that's always a possibility of losing something and capturing everything. But I cautioned everybody, make sure what you said last time got picked up in these minutes, because it's all about, the last thing we want to have happen is for us to feel like we have a flawed process because we've been so transparent and everybody's been so upfront. We definitely don't want to get to the end of this process and feel like somebody's been betrayed. And if I can, you know, I, I want to least speak on one thing. Our four co-chairs, they, we, we've had a very direct and open line of communication. Oh, and throughout this, you know, I'm going to say modification of that particular recommendation, we have communicated. Uh, it's just unfortunately I wasn't able to voice, you know, my concerns uh, as requested by last week. And so this was the only, you know, forum that I had the opportunity to. You know, but I don't want it much more important than no, no. anything, you know, anything else that goes on in this. No, room. but you know, I know we're in a public setting, and I don't want it to be construed that I'm saying that anything was done behind my back or behind anyone's back. And it's been very transparent and open about the discussions regarding this particular recommendation. As, as well as with Fernando, as well as the city manager's office as well. So I, I want to make sure I just make that clear. No, what I heard you say was the final document really didn't capture because of all the puts and takes that have taken place with it, in the meetings that took place. So what you need to do is just make sure that it captures what you call the committee has yes. and will submit it. And again, if we can get those by October the 31st. That is the drop dead date. I mean, that's the drop dead date. We've got to get something now done. We don't we've got to get it in or we're going to lose some time. To do. The co chairs will meet uh, on October the, no, November the 5th, I'm sorry. Is our next meeting. And that's why we're asking 
for all the recommendations to come back by October the 31st. And then we, as a task force, will come again and meet on November the 19th. November 12th, that's 12th. 12th. Oh, sorry, sorry. 12th. Yeah, November 12th, sorry. Back at uh, Botanic Gardens in Oakland, Oklahoma. And then the okay. follow-up meetings are at City Hall, just like it shows on your agenda. Yes. So we're, we're just about done. We're almost done. Got a lot to celebrate, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. Madam okay, Chair, as a matter yes. of uh, record, it would be vital to uh, entertain a motion by asking the committee to meet again and making reference uh, to, the now, to the September 24th draft at the, the version of that uh, we will consider modifying. Okay. Do we hear a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? No, uh, Rabbi Bloom, uh, response to the recent anti-immigration. Yes, uh, I, I will first start by saying everyone has the right to free speech, uh, even speech that we may not uh, like or agree with. Uh, we still believe everyone has that right to free speech. However, there are certain things when said or put up that uh, for a, whether they be bigoted, whether they be racist, whether they be however we see it, are inappropriate. And uh, we, we, we know that the signs that, that would, the flyers that went up and what was written above the bridge goes against um, equity and goes against the building of a community. I, I think I said at the first meeting, that the word shalom, peace, which is for all of us, is made up of the root of the word unity. So I think for us, we need to make a statement of unification, one, condemning that uh, hateful language and the flyers, two, um, talking about uh, education, what to do, and three, talking about unification as a city, saying we reject such language. That's behind think, tab three. Under tab three, there is a so, um, draft. There's a draft in tab three. We've been working on this for the better part of a week now. Uh, so I would hope that you know, we are a task force on race and culture. It's up to all of us to make a statement when someone threatens the race, culture, religion, anything else uh, it may be in terms of our city. So I think it's very important that we go on the record doing this, I know I did it for my community and for myself immediately after it happened, and this is our first time together, so I think we should do this as a group as well. And then Angie, do you want to let uh, everyone know, because the HRC met this morning yes. at 7.30 and there was an email sent, and you can update everybody on we, that. Yeah, the yeah. HRC met at 7.30 a.m. To, to discuss the incident. They did vote on a statement very, very similar. Um, in the, the structure to the race and culture proposed. They also have asked staff to bring back, they want to do some proactive uh, community building activities, such as um, hosting a Movies That Matter special screening um, on, on hate crime and possibly <coughs> facilitated discussion afterwards. Um, they also want to consider uh, becoming a gold star city as part of Not In Our Town. And um, I can send a link out to the task force with that information, but there are certain steps that have to be completed for that to happen, um, which includes community involvement and um, collaborations to work <coughs> together uh, to build a strong, strong communities. So we, um, staff will be bringing back very specific recommendations to the, the commission at their November 5th? Yeah. Fifth meeting, I believe. I believe that's, that's what it's their, yeah, their November fifth uh, commission regular scheduled commission meeting. So, uh, in summary, that's that, that's what happened. Um, and also, police were very uh, gracious to be there and answer their questions. And you had also talked about hosting some community forums. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Is everybody aware of what happened? Everybody is because. Well, explain what happened. No, I'm just, everybody said yes. Okay. Tom. 
Uh, there was a banner or some uh, off the of 35 on one of the bridges that talked about you know immigrants to, to leave for all immigrants to leave, and then there was flyers uh, on stickers, stickers and so forth on fire hydrants and so forth, you know memorabilia, flyers and things of that nature. Now the bridge is a textile bridge, not the city-owned bridge, but somebody took the, uh, the flyer off, and um, of course it got posted. And, uh, they took it off and so forth. And this is sort of an education uh, component that we can work on now to let people know when they do see any of that type of uh, information out to call the police so that the report can be made. Uh, let the police come take it down. If they have taken it down, go ahead and still call the police and put a report in so that they can follow up on it now. Charles, can we just get some clarification on what the police does? They take the banner down. The police weren't else? the one. The police weren't the ones who no, no, took no, down no, the banner. No. Who was the one? What the future? And the future? This is speaking to uh, uh, the yeah. police department. I'm just curious. Yeah. When you get that referred to you, what do you do with it? Sure. Well, we also recognize, you know, the freedom of the First Amendment. And for us, we do have a city ordinance that basically violates anybody putting banners, flyers, stickers on city or public property. And so we're able to enforce that city ordinance. In class C, a misdemeanor, uh, but nonetheless, it gives us at least some leverage point to, uh, you know, to do something with people putting those type of flyers up around our city. So if it's on city property, signs, the banded signs ordinance is that kind of what it falls under? Uh, not abandoned signs. It's actually placing the signs themselves on city property or public property. I just have one comment. I have certainly have no disagreement with issuing a statement and giving such language of action. At the same time, as one who's been a victim of racism, and some by a minority group of people, sometimes you bring more attention to them by reacting to them than you do by ignoring them. Uh, it seems that we haven't ignored them, so issuing a statement may be the proper thing. How much other stuff you do, uh, to me, gives them more credit than they deserve. But that's, that's me. Yeah, the commission was very cognizant of that. So they specifically made a point not to mention the group at all. And that the actions they want to take are, are actions that are good actions for the city, regardless of any particular incident. Okay. Uh, okay. Jennifer? I have a couple questions, but in response to Robert Sanders' comment, I would say that without, I agree that we don't want to specify and bring attention to that particular group, but I think we also have a responsibility to communicate to our citizens, our community, that we are in, their, in support of them and that we don't support this behavior and that our silence could be construed as a difference after they and not caring, quite honestly. And I think some of that is why we're even here today, a year later, doing this work. And so I'm an advocate of issuing a statement. I don't think that this is an opportunity that we, I think this is an opportunity where you can err on the side of over-communication. So I think the police department could issue statements, mayor and council could issue statements, because if we really are trying to be one for work, or I don't a gold think star city. I'm sorry. Or a gold star or city. Or whatever a gold star city or you know, passionate city or a welcoming city or any of those things. I don't think we can under communicate this. I think every group in our in our community, in our city, has some responsibility to push back on that kind of behavior. That's not what we want in our city. Now if it's okay, and I understand the, the core line of free speech, but that's also where I think your point where I agree with you, this is an opportunity to educate what, what's free speech, what's hate activity, what's a hate crime, and so one of the, the leads into some of my comments about the statement, um, it's more about are there others that are going to be making statements besides human relations than us. I, I think one of our open houses, there was mentioned that the mayor had issued a statement, but I don't know if that has happened. And, Get a copy of that, please. Um, 
Also, just kind of walking through a process, maybe FAQs that support this kind of thing that says when a uh, report's been made, what happens? And the reason I bring that up is because my understanding is my friend who, I'm friends with the woman that took down the second banner that was on the bridge. And my understanding is that she had very, some trouble. We had to really encourage her to call the police, even after the fact, make the report, gone emergency number. And she was challenged in, in getting through and then where's the right place for that. So I just want to make sure that we are clear of what's that process and then what can, what can citizens expect to happen with that? Um, I think what I've seen in my neighborhood, where why there may be hesitation to even bother reporting, just rather than take matters in their own hands, is because oftentimes you have you know, a break-in in the neighborhood, somebody's car, you know, well, they left valuables inside, or um, the doors were unlocked, or whatever, and nothing happens. And I know in some ways that's the needle in the haystack for the police to try to address. But from a citizen's perspective, it kind of falls in the same category. Of, I'm reporting, but where does it go? So I think having some of that um, be communicated and we take advantage of the educational opportunity, um, I think it's important. Otherwise, again, why not this task force? Well, and I was going to say, my question is, there's an emergency number on here to call. And I noticed y'all have the same number on your statement that the HRC was doing. Uh, what happens if you call that number? I, I mean, actually no. would defer to Chief Alder to answer his question this morning. So, <laughs> Whenever they call, there's two options that they have. One is they can file a report online. Um, they don't necessarily have to have an officer come out. We encourage them to have an officer come out um, because uh, we're, we're able to, you know, gather a lot more information and find out where the sign was located, maybe the time frames of whenever the sign was put up, and it helps us investigate that crime just a little bit more. Um, we encourage anyway. Uh, we also heard this morning maybe the reluctance on the Hispanic community because of the trust factor with the police department, and we have different avenues in which you know they can report. We have MPOs throughout the city, uh, neighborhood patrol officers that work hand in hand with the citizens, and they're Spanish speakers, we have non-Spanish speakers, we have all, all different types. And uh, they can talk to their MPOs, they can talk to the school resource officers. We have many, many officers around the city that are able to take a report like this. So what happens after? Afterwards, this report specifically, um, it's assigned to our downtown detective unit, our central um, investigative unit. Because it's a Class C offense, uh, it falls within their realm. However, a copy of that report number was given to our home, Homeland Security Unit because our Homeland Security Unit monitors the Facebook, uh, all social media sites, in reference to some of these groups. And so they keep tabs and keep records on incidents like this as well. And it allows you to track and trend yes, all of that information if it goes through one portal, right. if it goes through the police department then you have the opportunity to look at the magnitude of the problem. It's an isolated incident or are we now beginning to see a trend toward something bigger? Yes, ma'am. When did it appear? What, three weeks ago? There was one last week and then one the week what before. What time yeah. Last week's was in late afternoon. So I think the woman was on her way home from work. So has it been placed in the same location? I don't think so. I thought it was two different locations. Did you see it, Court? Mm -hmm. Did you see it? No. Yeah. I just saw the post in the last place. There were two of them, apparently. Um, and I don't know if the first fader said the same thing as the second. What, what but this first, the second fader, the one that I know what was taken down by friend, um, I want to say the south side. It's the morning side. Oh, it's the morning side. Morning side. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the sign said the fourth the mall. Oh. Yes, I'm Terry. So, uh, going back to the statement, we know we want, I'm assuming we've got buy in from everyone or support. I just make it editing. 
statement. I would say Fort Worth is a community that is learning to value diversity and inclusion. That's how we change our mission statement. Striving to, because we're having this discussion in a task force that was set up because we don't. I think we changed it in our mission statement. I thought we did. It's a strive towards diversity. Any other? I have just one. It's just the, the wording in the second paragraph where it says, residents report any activity that may target a segment of our community. And then in the last paragraph, to the last line it says uphold our values and not allow any segment of our community to target. It's reversed. That may target a segment of our community and at the end it says allow any segment of our community to target. It just yeah. the antagonist or the protagonist. Or any one individual to target. Or any individual. Any individual or group. Group. Yeah. To target any segment of our community. To target any segment of our community. My question is, is Fernando, did you get those captured? I believe the task force is saying that the statement should be modified so that the first sentence in the first paragraph reads, Fort Worth is a community that strives for... Well, it should agree with what we put in our mission statement. Well, actually, it wasn't the mission statement. It was the, it was the interim report in which we modified the language. Let me read you the language from the report. I think we just want to be... He said, uh, at the time, the draft had said Fort Worth takes pride in its racial and cultural diversity, and the task force changed it to read Fort Worth desires to take pride in its racial and cultural diversity. So if you want to so we might want to say here, Fort Worth is striving to become a community that values. Striving to become a community that values or a city. Okay. Or worth is striving to become a city that values diversity and inclusion. And then uh, in the third paragraph, uh, in this third sentence, thing we can to uphold our values and not allow any individual or group to target, to target any, any segment, segment of our community. Of our community. Those would be the changes that you would consider and be appropriate for you to entertain a motion okay. to that effect. Okay. Then, at this time, did y'all hear the revisions? We'll accept a motion to accept with the revised comments. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then that statement will go out. Next on our agenda is future meetings, Monday, November the 12th at Botanic Gardens, and that's where we'll approve the final report. And then on December the 4th, the task force presents the final report to City Council, and we urge uh, many of you to be there with us as we give that report to Council. And then on Tuesday, December 11th, City Council will consider a resolution accepting the final report, and if any of us can be there again at that meeting. Uh, I'll be really appreciative of that.
that on your calendars. Any closing comments? I'll start with Bob Ray. Uh, hallelujah, we're almost done. <laughs> Tell us how you feel again. <laughs> Two things. First of all, Ty, congratulations once again. And congratulations to uh, Sarah and Westcliff Elementary. Do you, want a, do you want to know how important education is for uh, elementary and bringing about uh, for the entirety of the school? She can tell you about the medal, the rec national recognition that we just won. Are you saying tell Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, our school was recognized as uh, one of America's best urban schools by the National Center for Urban School Transformation. And so we traveled to San Diego and received our silver medal award. Uh, one of 18 schools in the nation's Uh, at this time, because we are coming close to the end, I would ask each of you to make a comment as well uh, about this journey that we've all taken. But uh, just to hear from you all, you just don't have to hear from the full the co-chairs here, but we want to hear comments from you all. So, Miriam, I'll start with you. I think when I started, I was even skeptical that we were going to be able to do anything. Can you, can you, can you speak up? I'm sorry. Sure. I'm having trouble hearing. I was saying that even when I started, I was a little skeptical of what to expect, you know, are we going to be able to make a change? But what I think through this process is that we started that conversation in our community, and I think that's what has been valuable to me, to be able to talk to a cross aisle and get people to hear their stories and share their stories with each other, that we're starting to communicate, you know, at, at a level that we can understand and make some change, just even personally. So I think that from, from this whole process is what I think is that, that we're listening starting that process. I also think it's been great having the community have the opportunity to have this, you know, all these conversations. But I've also found the process that I'm glad you went back to the integrity of the process fascinating. The fact that we needed all those committees and that we all did need to spend time and delve into policies and just, I think when we first sat down, I don't know if we envisioned that it was going to be that kind of work. And I know even in my own work, I have taken that back to other employers, other groups, that everybody needs to go back and look at some of their policies. It's, you just don't realize how out of date and how some of those things impact things in your organization and then the community that you don't see happening. And I think this has just been a good exercise and process about the need to look at policies, to communicate on a positive side, on a regular basis. All those kinds of things are good for all of us to think about all the time in our daily work and in our community work. I, I agree the same um, what we're one city, you say, one, one community, the one neighborhood, the one city, the one county, and we're one nation under God. And um, having five children, four girls, one boy, um, and a, a good racial mix of them. Several years ago, I think President Obama, when he was about to be inaugurated, Bob race had a reporter call me, and I didn't know why. And he said, we want to come and you have an interesting family, and I didn't know why. And it was on the front page, and it showed us there. I have a daughter who has blonde hair and green eyes. I have a son whose skin is as white as yours, and blue eyes. I have a daughter who's my skin tone with long, straight hair, and I have one with curly hair. It's diverse. And on 4th Street, where we live, I told Bob Ray, I said, I could only imagine what happened on Judkins probably 50 years prior, where a man's house was shot into Reverend Austin by the KKK. What they would think about my family living on 4th Street on the corner. So Fort Worth is becoming progressive, it's more progressive, and I don't mean 
liberal or conservative, anything like that. We got to get ahead of the ball and stay ahead and continue to be the one forward. This has been an enlightening experience. I wish everyone in this city could be at this type of table. I, I don't care who it is, whatever side you're on, if you get in the same room, you will come out a little bit of understanding. Sure, I just kind of want to echo some of the same uh, comments. I, it's been a great experience for me. I've enjoyed the journey. I really like the fact that the community was involved throughout the process. Uh, yeah, I think it was mentioned earlier the, the transparency and the visibility throughout the entire process from the city as well as from the task force uh, was captured and, and available. And so I really look forward to the simple and what the city moves forward with. You started a trend, Charles. I've appreciated the process. I, I'm proud of the product. Um, I have a lot of curiosity about what happens when it gets delivered next to council, but I'm going to be optimistic. Sarah, since you've been with us, <laughs> such a short time, but you contributed tremendously. Oh, what an incredible honor and opportunity to be part of this group. I, I'm just so proud of our city, our mayor and city council for being proactive and just and opening up a can that's sort of painful and definitely uncomfortable and problematic sometimes when they didn't really have to. I just so admire that, that they wanted to go and reach into our community, into our hearts and minds and hear the pain, you know, I feel like acknowledging and giving ear to our pain and our struggle um, of the, men of the marginalized people in our community and the disparities that exist and exposing them. That's like the, always the first part of healing is exposing the wind. And I really feel like that happened in this process. It was just really touching and moving and it created empathy that maybe didn't exist before among different groups and it was really beautiful and, and just extraordinary and um, I just feel like the work was was really rigorous and academic the research and the time that went into the subcommittee work and the development of recommendations and so it's just a, a it's just a really historic um, opportunity that our city's taken a, the lead on and I'm just I'm just really proud of um, like Miriam, I was a little hesitant and even throughout the process, I think I had my doubts. People would think, how's it going? And I said, well, it's just the end of the day or the meeting or what have you. But I think a turning point, credit to the co-chairs and, and I think Fernando's guidance actually was the interim report in May. Um, I'm still cautiously optimistic with some of my colleagues to see what will happen come December um, and what will be implemented. But the, the fact that we've gone through this process, we've opened up dialogue, there's more groups that are talking now than ever before. They know each other. Um, there's groups that I was in conversations with that said that they were gonna kind of continue networking amongst themselves. Um, and so I hope they will and have been. Um, and I think this was also a good opportunity for some of our younger generation to speak up and get involved in different ways and have their voices heard because to be honest, they're the ones that are going to be running the show here pretty soon. Um, the millennials are the, the next biggest you know, generation, and so I'm not in that group. I'm going to be trying to hold on. Oh, whatever. But, um, <laughs> oh, I'm a Gen Xer for sure. So, um, you know, again, I think it's been painful at times, but I think worthwhile. So I'm, I'm glad to be part of it. Good. I felt privileged to be part of this. I am. Um, <coughs> I was a little, um, I'm still carrying with me a lot of the pain we heard in some of those uh, town halls. Um, and I'm hoping that all of our city leaders are carrying that pain with them. Um, I wish we'd had a little more time to examine things like white privilege, uh, because I think that's still a huge issue, uh, not talked about enough in this city. But like Jennifer, I, I know of groups that sort of found each other in this process that are still talking to one another. Various faith groups, various groups within communities. Um, 
I know in the housing uh, subcommittee, the staff work was incredibly supportive, undergirded a lot, I mean, undergirded our work completely. Um, and uh, the research was very, I mean, our learning curve was very steep. <laughs> and, uh, and the staff was, was very rigorous in their work. My hope is that when we present this on December 4th, which happens to be my birthday, mm -hmm. um, oh. I'm hoping that we will give this to the city not as a finished product. We will hand the, this to the city as the beginning of a discussion, of a beginning of things that can happen, where there will be results. Uh, that they will do some of the things that we, but I'm hoping that our work will speak into existence the awareness of what is still needed in this city. And by having spoken it out loud, I mean, the rabbi knows the power of the word. Um, I mean, and we are people of the word. And if we speak things out loud, until you say it to one another, it can't happen. And so I'm hoping that we will push some envelopes, that we will push some buttons, and it will push this city forward. First, I'd like to thank our four, four co-chairs for giving me this opportunity. I don't take it lightly what it means uh, to sit here in the seat that I occupy. Uh, you know, when I had the opportunity, I, I didn't know what to expect. I uh, kind of was big-eyed, kind of, you know, full of hope, thinking that we could change the world in one day. And, you know, you soon learn that that's not possible, but that doesn't mean you don't try. And I think... Uh, Having the opportunity to not only to work alongside everyone and to develop relationships that will go past this uh, task force uh, has, been, has been great. Uh, and also, I think the, the meaningful work in getting into the community, to talking to people from different backgrounds and uh, from different socioeconomic uh, statuses has, has really not only helped me personally self-reflect, but it also allowed me to put myself in other people's perspectives. Um, you know, I think it's important that uh, the work that we have done here doesn't just stop here. And I think it's incumbent on our elected officials, it's incumbent on our uh, city senior staff, and incumbent upon ourselves to not let our work die. And, you know, I, I believe in order to know where you're going, you have to know where you've been. And I think we've captured a lot of information, a lot of a lot of hurt, a lot of data, a lot of great things that are happening in, uh, within Fort Worth. And I think uh, just particular about my particular uh, criminal justice committee, you know, it, was, it wasn't always the, the, the easiest and it wasn't always fun. It was, it was uh, quite frankly, it was hard balancing my day to day, but then also my civic duty to the, city, the citizens of Fort Worth since I was their voice and to ask the hard comments questions and have the tough discussions. Uh, but I think in the end, I think not only did I grow a much greater respect for the PD, which I already had, but I, I would like to think that I left the uh, PD with some relationships that they understood the work that I was doing as well. And so I just want to thank you all again for giving me this opportunity and uh, it was in that. Well, I, I can honestly tell you that out in the short time that, that, that I had a chance to, to just you know, integrate what I felt was part of um, city activity, having been in it, having worked in the city of Fort Worth. You think you know some of it, and because you're always a city council, but I was just in the housing department, I thought, well, I have pretty first got an idea, but once you get in here, you realize that you had almost no idea of what, in effect, is taking place. I think. From that perspective, what you learn is not only just grassroots, but also the diversity of Fort Worth as a whole. The thoughts, the feelings, the expectations, even the different theologies, uh, which I thought was interesting. And in the public uh, forum, that when, when you're speaking to people, you're speaking to so many different levels of understanding of what local government is. And you realize that you're one of the most fortunate persons in the world here to be able to hear it to be able to be a part of it, and to be a part of people so competent as everyone on this board. And I thought, this is the voice of what in effect makes us great. And, and if we can understand what it means, it also gives us an idea of what we're called to be as a people, as a city. Uh, and, and obviously, as, as a people of different races and, and, and cultures. And for me, I thought that was just indispensable. I, that's the greatest thing that I take 
with me is, is understanding that I have a voice and at times I don't see it because I don't understand, but also because I don't get involved. And I understand the people that did get involved and the people that do are really the ones that understand this from a completely different perspective. And, and to that, I just want to thank the whole board here. For and, and, and you know, every time I didn't, I had a, a question, you know, I knew where to go to real quick. And, and so somebody would answer, I guess, it's, here, wait a minute, let me go to the <laughs> and, and the competent, uh, uh, you know, the competence is one thing, but just the willingness to share and be of yourself and the number of people there, I thought that was just excellent. So I, I just want to, yeah, thank you. I'm just like, I want to thank everybody for this wonderful opportunity. And hope it's not the last. I really enjoyed this. That makes us going to get more involved. Yeah. <laughs> we all heard it. We all heard it. <laughs> we got it. Um, well, I want to thank you all, and especially to share those comments, because it has been a long road. It's been a year and um, a year and a half. But like Katie said, this is a product that should just be the beginning. Because the only way we're going to get better is by continually having this conversation over and over and over again. Um, but we don't want to reinvent the wheel, come back five, ten years, and start from scratch all over again. We've got a, a starting place now, and we just need to move forward with that. But I also want to thank Fernando and Michelle and um, Angie and the city staff that has been our liaisons and uh, the people that have helped guide us. sure that we were always legal. <laughs> so, but uh, thank you all, and you know, we're not done, but we're almost there, and uh, hopefully that this will also engage other people to get involved. You know, serve on boards and commissions, serve for the city, serve on nonprofit boards, so that way you can get more engaged, and that's how we get better as a whole. Thank you all for being here. Thank you.